Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure for us to make a presentation here for us. Uh, so, uh, in this presentation, we will cover one undocumented feature that we have discovered in one sophisticated APT attack. But uh, before we talk about this feature, I want to tell you a little story about one top manager of big enterprise company. So, early in the morning, he received a very interesting email which contains attach uh, Microsoft Office document. So our hero opened this email and this document, read all information, closed this email and uh, document, and forgot about it. And several days after, we have registered a target attack against uh, this person and his organization. So how it looked like? Uh, at first, our hero opened this uh, mystery email. So, and it is important to mention that while reading this document, he was fingerprint. Uh, a very interesting information about his system was transferred to the threat actors infrastructure and several days after uh, threat actors uh, sent him an exploit for his version of Microsoft Office Word. So, it's important to understand that before any APT attack, threat actors should know as much as possible information about vi f future victim, such as uh, who is he, what software he is using, what version of software is installed in his computer. They should understand such information because they should know what kind of exploit they should use uh, to get exploitation on his system. And of course, they should uh, solve the problem how to filter victims if they will order a mass spam campaign against this company. So there are several well-known techniques how threat actors can fingerprint victims. The first one is an include a picture object. So this object could be embedded in the Microsoft Office documents, and this feature uh, can download uh, images from the remote server. And it is clear, and it is clear for us that if the server is controlled by threat actors. They can fingerprint victim. For example, they can understand that he uh, has opened the document and they can understand his IP address. Also, some threat actors can use uh, macroses for it and there is no need to tell how they can be malicious. And do not forget about flash objects because several threat actors are also embedding them to the Microsoft Office documents. And with the help of them, they can also fingerprint the victim and understand the operating system that is installed, what kind of software he is using. And some of them can download the second stage exploit, which will be executed in system. So several threat actors are using this technique. So let's return to our hero. That's how the document looked like. So interesting fact that this document didn't contain any macroses or flash objects. And after reviewing this document, very interesting information was transferred to the threat actors infrastructure. So the HTTP GET re request was sent to the threat actors infrastructure. And as you can see, uh, the user again field contains information about the Microsoft Office, which was installed in the victim's operating system. So uh, what we have done in our research, we have made a special internal tool which can parse Microsoft Office documents and try to understand if this malicious feature contained in document. Also, the size of source code of this tool is 300 kilobytes, and we have read a lot of manuals about internal file formats of Microsoft Office. So, in this place, I proudly pass word to the Alexander. Please. Thank you, Anton. Uh, so, to the technical details. Um, what document we are talking about here? Um, we are talking about OLE2 document. Uh, OLE2 is a pretty old and uh, very complicated uh, Microsoft format. Also, it is called uh, Microsoft Compound File Binary. Uh, you can see on the screen uh, the signature of the file. Uh, so, if we open the document in... Uh, uh, hex redactor uh, and list all the strings. We, uh, we can see the URL uh, which was requested uh, in Unicode format. It, it is present in the file. So uh, now we got interesting and tried to understand uh, why does Word uh, sense this request. Because uh, we haven't found any known uh, techniques uh, uh, used in this document to send such request, and also there were no uh, active content in it. Uh, so, uh, Anton already mentioned include picture. Uh, uh, we find include picture in this document too, 
But as you can see, uh, the URL uh, in include this include picture uh, is not the URL actually requested. This happens before uh, here uh, include picture URL is uh, encoded into Unicode, and uh, they, uh, actually uh, Word expects uh, include picture argument in SASCII format, so it just skips it. But uh, still, this include picture uh, was uh, the f thing because uh, the request was sent. We will see it further. Uh, so I will keep track of uh, what's going on uh, in such slides. So currently, we found an include picture uh, with uh, invalid URL argument. Uh, so in order to understand what's happening, we need to know what include picture is. <coughs> include picture is. Uh, uh, a kind of uh, document field. Uh, document fields are uh, parts of the text of the document uh, which are placeholders for some special data, and they are specially ha handled by uh, the viewing program. In our case, it is work. So what kind of fields exist? For example, a uh, hyperlink field. If you see a clickable URL in the document, this is likely done by hyperlink field. Uh, also, page references, for example, uh, done uh, uh, with uh, uh, document fields too, and include picture itself is a uh, field too. So, what do we know about include picture and fields uh, in common uh, from Microsoft documentation? Not very much. There is a reference to ECMA standard. That's what it says. That include picture means uh, that uh, there is some picture uh, pointed by the argument of include picture, uh, which should be loaded by the word. And that's all. Uh, it's not so really ha helpful for us uh, in this case. Also, uh, fields are stored in special way. <coughs> uh, there is uh, special bytes with, which signify the beginning of the field the end of the field, and also there is a separator byte, uh, 13, 15, and 14, uh, correspondingly. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, uh, between separator and the end byte uh, should go uh, a field. Uh, it is very important to, uh, to remember this, because on this slide we will see that uh, it's no, not really so. So here is our include picture, and uh, in uh, red frame you can see the byte which marks the beginning of the field. Uh, in yellow uh, frame you, you can see the separator byte, and uh, in pink frame you can see the end byte. But uh, between uh, the separator and the end byte, uh, there is uh, a byte uh, framed in green frame, uh, which is just 0, 1. But from the previous slide we know that uh, there should go a field and a single byte is definitely not a field. Uh, so we got interested here and uh, thought, uh, what can we make of this? So what, what we know currently, it's uh, there, uh, there is uh, a suspicious byte in the end of the field of include picture. Uh, so uh, in order to continue, we need uh, uh, to know of such things as character properties. Uh, so, uh, text of the Word document uh, uh, is, consists of a uh, number of characters, and some characters have uh, special properties assigned to them. For example, if you see cursive uh, or bold uh, 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 types, uh, then uh, it is made by character properties. Uh, also, character properties are used uh, for different uh, modifications of text. Uh, so, uh, the text of the document is uh, stored in uh, Word document stream. It's a subfile in OLE2 doc uh, document. Uh, and on the screen you can see uh, relative offsets of uh, these, uh, our three bytes uh, from the beginning of the file and from the beginning of the document stream. Actually, character properties are stored in a very complica complicated way and uh, in multi-layer tables, and uh, it is really hard to par parse them. It takes uh, to, to write uh, a very big amount of code. But uh, we did it, and uh, we found out that <coughs> there is uh, 
the uh, properties assigned to these three bytes. And uh, these uh, properties have property type modifier called uh, C peak location. And value of it is zero. Uh, so uh, we found that uh, these suspicious bytes have uh, character properties uh, assigned to them. And uh, this property type is C peak location. So what's a uh, peak location? From Microsoft documentation, we can find out that uh, this property type modifier means that uh, there is a picture somewhere in the document which is uh, linked to this character. Microsoft documentation says that uh, CPIC location uh, should be assigned to single character only. But here we can see that uh, we have three characters. And uh, also, the, there is a thing about that it should be a Unicode, uh, Unicode character. In our case, it's 001. Actually, it is not really clear from uh, Microsoft documentation uh, what's going on here. Uh, uh, during our experiments and research, we found out that uh, bytes 14 and 15, which are kind of control bytes, are just skipped uh, by uh, Word, Microsoft Word. Uh, and uh, for, for us, uh, it, it ha happens that uh, the picture is located in data stream of the document. And uh, the format of uh, this picture is PICF and Office Art Data. Actually, PICF and Office Art Data uh, is not the format of a picture. Uh, it's a format of special container which could contain different kinds of uh, pictures, uh, draw objects, and other graphical data. So uh, we found, uh, found out that uh, the picture uh, assigned for these three bytes is located in the data stream and uh, in uh, this PICF and Office Art data format. So uh, we go to the uh, data stream to offset zero, since the value of uh, character property modifier uh, was zero, and parse this data as PICF and Office Art data. Uh, here are some fields of this uh, data. But what is most important to us is that uh, the format of this data is a uh, shapefile. So inside this container, there is something called shapefile, and it has uh, its own special format, too. Uh, so uh, here, uh, here, there we are now. So uh, if we parse uh, the data inside the container as a shapefile, we can see that um, the name of this shapefile is uh, the URL, which was also listed uh, in the string in the middle of the presentation. But it's just a name and uh, means nothing to Word, actually. So we go further and uh, continue to parse this shapefile according to its format <coughs> and find uh, a field called PIB flags. Uh, PIB flags are special flags that say uh, for how should we uh, use and for uh, read the shapefile. In our case, the value of it is uh, 0e in hexadecimal system, which is a combination of uh, three flags. Uh, the most important flag to us is, uh, is the one which says uh, URL. Uh, this flag means that uh, we should take PIB name complex uh, data, uh, and, and decode it uh, from Unicode and use it as a remote location uh, for the actual data of the shapefile. And if we uh, decode this data, we can see that uh, this is the URL uh, which was actually requested. Uh, now we found it. Uh, so, uh, finally, we got to the point where uh, we found out uh, why the request uh, actually happens. Uh, the content of the shapefile, uh, which is actually a picture uh, property assigned to this uh, three bytes, uh, which I told about, uh, is located on a rem remote location, remote URL. Uh, so summary of what uh, actually happens, then we open this document. Uh, we see uh, invalid argument of include picture, uh, then uh, uh, several bytes of uh, this include picture field from separator to end have uh, special properties assigned to them. 
uh, this type of his properties is uh, C peak location. And uh, C peak location uh, points into data stream to offset zero, and uh, the format of data in data stream at this location is PICF uh, and office R data. And uh, there is a shapefile inside this container. And shapefile actual content is located on the remote URL. And then Word makes the request. So that's all about technical details. Uh, Yes, from this presentation, it's clear, clear for us, and uh, Alexander forgot to mention ah. that uh, it is very valu valuable research because we have successfully reproduced this uh, uh, this feature in uh, iOS version of Microsoft Word. So, if the future victim will open this document in iOS version of uh, Word, so the uh, request also be sent to the uh, malicious uh, threat actors infrastructure. And it's clear for us that uh, threat actors are making uh, deep research in the internal file formats uh, to fingerprint future victims. And uh, it, in fact, it is very hard to make a detection of such techniques because, as you saw from our presentation, security solution has to make a deep inspection of uh, internal file formats and decide if it is malicious or not. And also it is important to mention that uh, we couldn't make this presentation without our expert in Microsoft Office uh, internal file formats. His name is Andrew Krukov. He's an uh, amazing expert in, in these things. So thank you very much, Andrew, for your amazing research. And thank you for, thank you for your attention. It, it is, it is, we really appreciate your attention. Thank you.